I'm Seamless, and today I'm here to give you the shortest, smallest, bestest EQ tutorial you'll ever see. So this tutorial is essentially how to EQ things, pretty much anything for any situation if you don't know what the problem is. So you have a sound, and you think to yourself, oh, there's, like a, there's a problem with it, there's some balance in the spectrum, and like it doesn't just feel right. And you, if you cannot immediately identify where the issue is, then here's the technique for figuring out what it is. What you do, you grab a node. You grab a node, and you start scanning around. Basically, just listen to it. And what and what you're what, what you're you're looking for? You're waiting for a very specific thing to happen. What you're waiting for to happen is for the sound to stop sounding weird. Whatever problem that you perceive to be there, if it is lessened by it f falling into a particular section that you just moved the thing into, that's how you know that's where the problem was. And it could be a boost, it could be a cut, it could be you know really anything. But like if you move it around and you just kind of you move it into a place and you can sense, you can feel to yourself, oh, that's better. Then you, you've done it. You fix the problem. You do this. Uh, you 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 could do it with a sound by itself. You could do it with stuff in context. You should probably do it with stuff in context. And what I mean by that is you play it if you're like in a song. You've got drums and other stuff and whatever. You play it all together, and then you you're EQing this one thing, and, and you move that around until everything starts to to sort of fall into place. And that's how you know that you're making things better because it just feels better. The whole idea of mixing is that we're trying to get everything to work well together as well as things did when they were by themselves, which is all, you know, d well and difficult. And there's all kinds of calculations and thoughts and, and techniques and things that are more complicated than what we're talking about now. But this is the most basic idea of how to solve those kinds of problems. And this is, this is, this is especially useful for when you're not yet experienced enough to hear a sound and immediately know what particular frequency range you're hearing is an issue. Because... That that'll come with time. That'll that'll be a thing. But in the beginning, when you when you don't know what the one k two k range sounds like versus the five k ten k range, versus the you know the five hundred two hundred range, if you can't distinguish a difference between those issues or even know what they sound like when there is a problem, then knowing to go there and to do these things to it to fix it is gonna kind of elude you. And so this solution of just kind of taking it around and moving it around and not listening to the neat sounds of the transformation of motion that we're creating by moving around essentially a filter, but listening, just waiting for it to fall into place. We're, we're moving it in and going, wait a minute, oh, that sounds like we're not moving it anymore. It doesn't sound like it's being modulated. It sounds like it's right all of a sudden that this was its original position that you wanted it to be in and that the position of it not being there at all is actually, actually part of what sounds like the modulated sort of problem change. And that's how you get that to work. This is a super basic idea, obviously, but this was sort of one of the original uh, techniques that I was taught when I didn't know anything about equalizing, and it worked out. So yeah, I'm Seamless. You're watching stuff on Sonic Academy, and this has been Equalizing. Happy, happy Equalizing. Yeah. <laughs>